So, hello there, folks. It's yet another episode of Virtual Casts, special episodes. It's hooray! Kyle's time. Uh, it's it, it's not a most pleasant time to wake up on Saturday. I mean, it's like oh, 7 a.m. for you. Time. Yeah. Okay, it's a fine time. <laughs> <laughs> but you would love to sleep more. Well, I might have slept a little longer, but it's okay. This is when we usually end up doing it, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> true that, true that. It it could be four a.m. That would be a little bit worse. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would be that would be all right for me, but not so good for you. Anyway, so uh, we are here for yet another top one hundred list, and now it's uh, it's a little bit different one. We don't do twenty five games. We're gonna do more. How many more? Yep. A lot more, a, a few. Remember, I don't do numbers very well. Like, like, but like about four, about forty games. Yeah. Forty games, yes, yes. So we're gonna do forty games um, because uh, there will be uh, the final. The final one will be a top ten, and we're gonna combine our top tens. Not like in a way that we're gonna have just one top ten for two of us, uh, but we're gonna do um, <laughs> top ten That'd videos. Very strange yeah. choice. Yeah, we're gonna do our top tens in the same at the same time. Like that will be the fourth installment, as I told you before. There will be four installments, so so it will be maybe a little bit more interesting for everybody to view, so we can oh, share. I'm sure it this too. is very interesting. But um, I think without further ado, uh, let's just go to your list and start with a number. You call out the numbers because you have the numbers right. in front of you. I yeah. do. I've got them right here. So we're going to start with number fifty. And number 50 is a game that used to be a lot higher. I just, uh, the problem is, of course, I don't play it as much anymore, mostly because of it having so many expansions that it's hard to kind of take with me anywhere. The game is Small World. Mm -hmm. Small World is a game that I still love quite a lot. It's a, a little area taking, you know, fighting game. It's, it's kind of like what Risk wanted to be. <laughs> <laughs> in my opinion, you, you've got a bunch of characters with special abilities, different races, and you are taking over areas. The fighting is deterministic. There's really very little luck in the game other than the order that the races come up. But what you're trying to do is take control of an area and use your special ability to get the most points. And there will come a point in the game where you will likely have to put your race into decline, which makes it inactive and take a new one. And it's really just that. It's using special abilities, taking over and then finding the right moment to balance when to essentially go to sleep mm -hmm. and make a new one. Uh, I have the Deluxe Edition. That is a huge, expensive game uh, that I, w I love to play. It's my preferred way to play. Unfortunately, it's in a huge, very heavy box. And the other edition is doesn't really fit in one box, so it's kind of a weird storage solution. But other than that, I really like the game. And that's my number 50, Small World. Okay, so yeah, I played Small World, I think, once. I played the, oh. um, not the, um, this is the Underground or whatever the okay. other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and I That is the lesser like... of the two, but, okay. it, it, but it, you can combine them. Mm -hmm, so. mm -hmm. I just I just didn't like it. It's it's very confrontational, just about pick, up, pick the race and just, you know, wipe the board out with... Your race, and, I, yeah, not for me. And supposedly this year is coming Small World of Warcraft. <laughs> okay, I could, <laughs> I could care less. Ridiculous. Yes, <laughs> sounds ridiculous, but it, it you know, uh, it's it's basically just bait for people like me to buy another game. Yeah, it's 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 uh, a game for many people. Yeah, it, it works well. Yeah, <laughs> a popular okay. game and popular IP going on there. So your number. Number 49 yes. is a game that I know you've played. This is Seven Wonders Duel. Short yeah. game, fast game, portable game. One of my preferred take with me if I'm going to go see somebody games. You've got this drafting game where you've got this sort of pyramid of cards and you can only take a face up one and taking a face up one may unlock some face down ones that are below it. And that's really it. You're trying to get the most points, or you could try and win by working on your military track or by gaining certain science symbols so you can end the game early. That's kind of, I mean, there's not a whole lot there. There is an expansion as well. The expansion has some, is good. I like it a lot, but it has so many different symbols that it's a little bit difficult to, to 
play unless somebody already knows it and is familiar with those symbols. But I really do like the game, just the base game, even without the expansion. Played it lots of times. That is my number 49, Seven Wonders Duel. Yeah, and in probably Polish, it's Pojedinek. So <laughs> it's very similar okay. to Russian word Pojedinek, which is right. dual. So, uh, right. but yeah, I, I play this one. I do really like this one. This is much better for me than it, it kills Seven Wonders for me. Oh, for I mean, me, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's only a two player, but it's, it's so fast. It's so engaging. Just grab a card, do something combinations and and the drafting from the center is much better for me than drafting from it from that because i'm not a drafting person myself i don't right. really like drafting so and there's a new expansion coming this year so even better oh another one oh i see yep another one i'm, I'm hoping I, you know, I i always like more for this game i'm hoping that it will be a little bit easier to implement than the other one yeah. we'll the box see. gets a little bit too small for well, yeah, the box is a little bit too small, but maybe the new expansion comes in a huge box. Uh, but that might ruin <laughs> one of my things I like about the, the smash up thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or Scythe, Scythe Legendary Box. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Be a bit much. All right. Anyway, so, moving on, my number 48 is a game that I know you have played because you played it with me and you didn't like it that much, but I really do. The game ooh. is Isle of Sky. Oh. Isle of Sky is uh, an interesting game where you're taking, you're sort of building this map, kind of Carcassonne style, although with a little bit more openness because you're only working on your own map. And uh, you're bidding, and it's an interesting bidding system where if you, you set the prices and then you have to pay the price for the things if nobody buys it and you get to keep it or you get the money if somebody else uh, decides to buy it from you it's an it's it's a very interesting little game that's going on and i i'm not very good at it you've also got a lot of different score you've got four different scoring variables and each one will score twice during the game there are also two expansions to this game and i cannot comment on them because although i bought them i have never played them i just never happened to have them with me when we're playing somebody else's copy of this and i don't know i just i'd love to try those but i really like this game i i like it's one of those games that every time i play it i wish i say i wish that i had played that a little bit more so <laughs> mm -hmm. there you are that is isle of sky yeah for me it, it seems to be a little bit like the carcassonne a little bit over complicated carcassonne Maybe I, I, yeah, just not not the art for me and not the game for me. I mean, like mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit too dry for me. Yeah, I remember you weren't you weren't a huge fan, but I was and I still am. That's good. <laughs> All right, number forty-seven is an older game that is about to get a reprint, and I'm excited for that. Uh, it is. I don't think it's been on my top one hundred before, but as I was going through it, I was uh, the, the the games I liked it just sort of I realized how much I really like this game. Uh, the game is Cleopatra and the Society of Architects. Mm -hmm. This is a, 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 a an interesting looking game. You've got all these big plastic pieces and you flip the box over and build stuff on it. But what you really are doing is you're collecting cards which have resources and you're trying to contribute different things to this palace to get the most points. But you always have this choice of whether you're going to use the cards that are good materials or the cards that are corrupt materials and half the deck is upside down so you don't always know what you're getting it's really it's really quite interesting and then of course the person who has taken the most corruption at the end of the game loses just flat out and you've got this little pyramid where you're putting the corruption tokens into so you never quite know how much anybody has so there's this interesting balance of, of, of making good choices <laughs> and mm -hmm. also trying to build things the most efficiently and the most quickly to get yourself the most points. It looks really good when it's set up. Uh, I've seen pictures from the Kickstarter of the new one, which looks even better. So there's that. I really like this game. It's a game that I just don't see get talked about as much anymore, but it's one that really deserves a second look. Yeah, that's uh, that's the picture of the second one, the Lux version. Oh, yeah. So. Yes, it is, because it's painted. Yeah. So, yeah, I've... I'm ready to to try this one when it comes out. Whatever I don't know, is it, it's in Kickstarter something like that? Yeah, it was on Kickstarter. I was and okay. It, 
I mean, it's yeah. Well, it hasn't it hasn't sent out yet, but they they posted pictures a couple of weeks ago of the final version, which looks quite good. Yeah, um, they, it, it's a it's a game. One of the designers is Bruno Catala, so I was about to try this one, but um, it was an older version. The older version had some problems, as I know, and so I, I, I not really. Okay, I, I don't know. It's because... just it, 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 it had a problem in that it was out of print and hard to find. Yeah, maybe that too. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, when the you know, new if, version comes, I'm I'm ready to try it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even if you find the old version, I mean, the old there's nothing wrong with it. The only reason I'm getting the new one is because it's shiny and new. <laughs> yeah. True that as well. Anyway. All right. Keep going to number forty six. Number forty six is a game that I wish I got to play more. It's a big game that's sort of a real time game. It's called Millennium Blades. And this is, of course, the game that was sort of, it almost felt like it was a, somebody's joke experience. But it's a game about playing a collectible card game competitively. And it's played in real time. And you've got to, you know, you, you've got, you're opening the packs, but it's really, you're just flipping blind cards and getting, taking the best one out and trying to make your own deck as quickly as possible. You've got, the money is the is this paper money, but it's all these big stacks of money, so that it doesn't you know it's, it's easy to handle and it's kind of fun to throw them around. It has a new expansion coming out. This is a game that I I don't get to play nearly as often as I'd like to, uh, just because there's a little bit of learning going on in it, and you know you've really got two phases. You've got the sort of play the game phase like the collectible card game that it's about. And you've got this economic phase, which is real time where you're trading and you're buying and you're opening and trying to allow yourself to have the best deck. And so you'll do one of those phases, which is really fun. And then you'll stop and you'll play the actual game, which is less fun, but it's not bad. And then you'll go back to the fun real time part. So that, that's kind of how I feel about the game. Uh, it is, like I said, it's a little bit hard to teach just because of, of lots of the, the things that are going on in it. Mm -hmm. But it's really a good game if you get a chance to, to play it. And I rare I rarely do, but I love it every time I do. So there you go. <laughs> My number 46, Millennium Blades. Okay, yeah, it's it, it's probably, it has a lot of parodies on those um, animes and mangas oh. from Japan and so on. It's like, I, I, yeah. see, I see those references a lot and the the cover of the game I mean it's it's Yu-Gi-Oh it's, it's well, 100% it, Yu-Gi-Oh it, it, it has that but there's also lots of in joke jokes about the different cards there's several that are based on other games it's mm -hmm. you know it's that you can see characters from games that you like that show up in this one as well it's there's a lot of that too it's definitely a game for people who play a lot of games because they're going to understand it a little bit uh, understand the references a little bit more although you know you don't have to get them mm -hmm. uh, i it, it's a great game though so okay 46 is millennium blades okay all right number 45 number 45 is a smaller abstract game the game is called war chest i don't know if you've played this one but it's it's a no. really interesting little game where you've got this board and you're trying to control certain points and you also have these chips that's your 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 figures on the board and as you every round you're going to draw a number of chips into your hand and you'll use them for different things you can put them on the board you can use the chip to activate similar chips that are on the board or you can buy new chips for your bag and so you, you've always got if you put too many of one kind of unit on the board and then that means you're not going to be able to control it very much. And so there's this interesting balance going on there where you're wanting to thin your bag out so that you have, you know, a lot of activations for the existing chips. But also if somebody kills one of your units, it's gone for good. And so you're really trying, It's there's a lot of interesting decisions that are going on. And you're trying to make the most of, of your little army and control these these waypoints on the board. I really like it. It's one of my favorite abstract games. Okay. Uh, it because of that, it might be a little, you know, the way that it looks, kind of, it looks like an abstract game. Although the components are yes. very nice, it might be a little hard to convince somebody, hey, this is what I want to play. True. But it really is worth it if you if if you get into it. It also has an expansion which came out in a box, but I just put it into the. It was a really nice box, but I put it into my big box anyway. Uh, 
I really I think this is this game has a lot of potential. So mm-hmm. I hope yeah. it continues to get more more added to it because it's a great abstract game. Yeah, I'm not just really into into such theme or mechanics. So yeah. Well, there really uh, isn't very much theme there. So yeah, I mean the <laughs> battle and you know you have all these different troops and such. You know, yeah. the, the the cover up theme. You know. Yeah. Okay. All anyway, right. That's my number forty-five. My number forty-four is a game that used to be in the top ten, but I just don't. It's it's got such a learning curve that I don't play it very much anymore. It's uh, Mage Wars, and you know. There's also there's the two versions. There's the Academy version and the I think it's called Arena version. And I think after playing both a lot, I think I like the Arena version a, version a little bit better, the bigger version because you've just got more going on. The uh, the Academy version is easier to teach and get into, but it takes away any of the tactical movement. And so I think I like the Arena version better. But you've got essentially. Bunch. I mean, you've got a, a book, a, a binder full of all of your cards. That's sort of the, the game shtick, is that you can always choose whatever cards you want. You don't have to draw blind at all. And so the different decks are, the different sorcerers that, you're, that you can use are very different. And they have different spells, and you're trying to run around and kill your opponent's mage. It's, you know, very much what it is. The problem with the game, of course, is that it's really very difficult to teach to anybody new because you have to hand the person this large book of cards and say, go ahead, choose the one you want. Mm-hmm. And that's it's a bit daunting for people who don't know what they're doing yet. So it's a game that I just don't get to play with anybody who hasn't already played it before. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's if ever I do get to play it, it's quite a treat. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, never uh, played it. Well, I, I'd be happy to try and teach it to you, but you really have to. I mean, it's just like Codex in that you you have to really commit to a yeah. long a, a long first game. I feel and... like not doing this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just just the yep. book, you know. Building up the deck is not my. I I don't really like. I like pre build decks and just play with them, and you know, well, give and, me and that's the rules. What I have. That's I mean I keep mine essentially as pre-built decks for each mage, just because of that. Because I figure if I'm ever going to play it, it's going to be with somebody who wants a pre-built one. There is the possibility of customization, but the library of cards is so enormous at this point that that's extremely daunting. I mean that would be that would I mean that that's a different game by itself almost. Yeah. So. Okay. Anyway, there you are. Number forty-four, Mage Wars Arena. Number 43. Number 43 is a game you have played. This is Underwater Cities. This was my favorite game from last year. It is, uh, you know, this is just a fantastic little game where you're drawing cards and you're using those cards to take actions. And you have to make a decision to return whether you want to take an action based on the color of the card or whether you want to take an action based on the board. And if you, if, if the color of the card matches the color of the board space, you get to do both. So you're trying to be as efficient as possible. You're trying to build up your own little underwater city. You build up your board and collect bonuses and, and reach your own goals and score points. Uh, it's a game I like best with two just because it's a little longer. But it's, it's a great game. I, I know there's an expansion that should be out soon. It apparently had some printing issues in, when, it, when it came out in Germany in, in the fall, but it's got these nice boards that are these sort of double-layered boards so that you can put the things in and they won't move around, which is nice. But yes. it's a fantastic game, a lot of fun, and it's one that I really enjoy. That's why it's on my top 100. 43! <laughs> true, true, true. It's... Um... It lists it uh, as a 2018 game because it came out in Essen 2018. And I also struggled to, you know, where should I put it as a 2018 because it came out in 2018. But yeah. I mean, like most of the copies you could get in 2019, the Rio Grande reprint and like I don't, I don't know, it's it's hard for me to to put it somewhere. But but it's a great game. I do really 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 enjoy it. It gives me everything. The um, it gives me the engine building, 
parts. Mm -hmm. It gives me the building up part, which is like building your own city thing on your yep. separate board, yeah, which I do really enjoy. And it gives me that searching for the combos with a little bit of luck. You know, yep. it's a luck whatever you draw, but you always have something to do. On the other hand, and combine your cards with the worker's spot. So yeah, it's it gives me all three of those great mechanics that I love. Yeah. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. All right. Moving on. Number 42 is a game I like best with two. Uh, the game is Five Tribes. Mm -hmm. It has a, three expansions, technically, although I, I, I've only ever played with one of them. Uh, <laughs> but this is a game where you sort of seed the board with a, with a bunch of these little meeple figures. And every turn you're going to pick up from one spot and move that in many spaces and then activate a spot with a matching color you get to activate the action of the space you move to and the color you used and there's really a bunch of different ways that you can go forth and get points at that point and you can focus on whatever you want and points you you shake the magic point tree and they fall from the sky and you know the theme isn't really strong at all but no. it's it's a fantastic little game, an interesting puzzle, and with two players, it has the ability that you might you know you can sort of cons control. It makes the bidding more interesting because you can control when you're going to go, and you might be able to set yourself up for a, a better turn. And so yeah. I I really like it with two, although it's fine with three. Four might just take a little bit too long, but there you go. Four, yeah, four is not is not a good way to play this game. Three is a max. But two is the best, yeah, for me as well, uh, because you can do uh, you can do two turns in a row, sometimes, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, you can do some big combos, and yeah, I do really enjoy this one. This is this is very AP prone game. I mean, like with yeah. certain people. Yeah. But the combos yeah, you get, <laughs> yeah. But the combos you get also you kind of build up, and the board is crowded, and then becomes less crowded. You know, it kind of doesn't give you more and more and more and more options as you go. It kind of yeah. gives you that through abilities, but it's all the same, like just boosting the same thing you're doing. So very yeah. nice little puzzle game. There you go. All right. Moving on, number 41, a game that I didn't think would get any more expansions, but got one this year that I haven't even purchased yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, the game is Through the Ages. Mm -hmm. Through the Ages is, a, is an older game. It was reprinted. The reprint is really the one that I use at this point because it, it was a little bit nicer. It is a fantastic, interesting game where you're you're building up your civilization engine. You're you're not really. It's not very thematic. It's all sort of takes place on this. Basically, you build your civilization on this track, and that's kind of what it is. But you're gaining different actions: military actions, civil actions. You are using those to buy new cards, to build buildings, and as you build things, you unlock different costs, but also unlock better resources. It's a difficult game to describe, but it works really well. This is a game, however, that I don't think I will ever play with more than two again. Mm -hmm. I think this is a two-player game at this point for me, because even with two, yes. you're looking at a very long experience. And I, I like I like it as its full version, more than sort of the training version that you teach people on. But I, you know, it's, it's just, this is a good game and it is well regarded. And I think there's a reason for that. I used to play it a lot more than I do now. I don't think I played it at all last year, but the year before, I think I played it 30 times. So uh, <laughs> take that for what it is. I'm looking forward to the new expansion. Not sure what it's, what I'm going to find there, but, Leaders and wonders, or something yeah, like that. It's like leaders and wonders is, is what it's called, I think. Yeah. But uh, you know, that's I, what I you get. What <laughs> yep. Anyway, it's a streamlined version of expansion. Just tells you what you get. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I. That's the one. That's one of those um, prime examples of a game that I feel like it, like it's a great game that I will never play again. Mm. It's the, just too much investment for me. It is a large investment in terms of time and understanding the rules. And to really enjoy the game, you have to be familiar with the rules. It's not very easy to enjoy your first yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Other than if, to be fascinated with the potential of replays. The, <laughs> Which is what plus, 
Yeah, plus if you if <laughs> like I'm I'm a fan of civilization as a video game. Sid Meier's one. And that's where kind of a, I draw the line. I mean, like it's hard for me to play this game if there is that civilization video game in my mind, you know, it's like stuck there, the, the image. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I kind of uh that's how I see the civilization yeah. game. Yeah. It's really hard for me to say anything about that. So yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Moving onward, we're going quickly since we're trying to cover so much. Uh, number 40 for me is a game that is famously out of print. Uh, the game is called Glory to Rome. It is a game that came out in really very poor packaging with artwork that is quaint, but is a solid game that has really, you know, people remember it well. That's not the version I'm talking about. That was the, uh, but anyway, the. Yeah. The game is where you, it's a game of multiple use cards. It's essentially what it is. Each card can be used as a building. It can be used as a resource. You can store it for points later. And that's really what you're trying to do. You select a role, you perform the action every pe people can follow if they would like, and you're trying to get yourself points. That's really all there is to it. But it's the way, this is the best example probably of those multiple use cards. And it's a sort of a, a dragon that that designer has been chasing for a while uh, <laughs> and not quite been able to get back there, though there are a couple of other games that are similar. None of them's quite reached what this game was. And unfortunately, it's just very, very difficult to find. But if you have a chance to play it, you should because it's glorious. Yeah, yeah. I've played it. Uh, I played once. I, I think I've played the... Uh... I don't know what version was it because there are so many versions that like as you can see here as well there are all the different languages and paste ups and like reprinted versions of that like you take the artwork from the polish version and then put the english text in it and so on so people like do <laughs> all those print and plays all the time i mean like i don't know i think i played also like a print and play version yeah, of well, that game yeah. because it, like the, he wanted to make a artwork nicer you know you, you can see here such artwork and then totally different one and something else again and so i well, don't that's know the one. I... that's the original one right there okay that's the original okay okay mm -hmm. so that that's okay yeah i played it it was nice uh i also played the other version of that the motainai version of that yep and kind of uchronia they liked a little bit i liked them a little bit better because they were easier kind of mm -hmm. this one just didn't strike me yeah. There you are. Well, moving on. Number 39. Number 39 is a, you know, of all the games that came out last year, this is the game that I think I see played the most, at least around here. The game is Teotihuacan. Yes. Which is dry looking and brown and quite ugly, but it's a fantastic game. Oh, it um, is ugly. I. You know, okay, that the cover looks fine, but the board yeah, the cover is amazing. Basically, is basically just shades of brown. Um, really, what you're trying to do is gain points, surprisingly, but you've got these dice and you're moving them around the board. And as you move them, you'll move them to lo new locations. You'll pay for what else is there, and then based upon how many dice you have there, you're going to be able to do and the numbers on those dice. You're going to be able to do better and better actions. And essentially, that's it. You're moving around, you're picking up stuff, you're building the this pyramid in the middle of the board if you can, and you're working on your own things. And it's, it's it really works very well. And I know some people who don't like the game, but if, if you go to any of our like game fests that we have around here, I mean, I, I see this game being played on just about, you know, two or three tables constantly, even though it's a little bit older at this point. A little bit older. It's a year old. I have the expansion for it, but I haven't had a chance to play with that yet. So, it's uh, it's a go to game for board and dice. It's their like primal game, you know. Uh, but yeah, it's like spreadsheets, like Excel spreadsheets and symbols that just put the symbols on top of the Excel spreadsheets. It has some artwork there and there, but it's all covered with a ton of different like rows and columns and symbols. Uh, it just takes away uh, 
my kind of a feel <laughs> to play yep. it, you know. I understand. Um, so. But, you know, I, I've, I've always enjoyed sort of this group of designers. So, uh, so and this is probably, you know, this is a really good entry into the system. They have the third one coming, the Egypt one. Maybe the Egypt one will be the one that I'll play eventually because because one thing that I know for sure I love e Egyptian theme. So mm -hmm. maybe well, it will, will convince me. Certainly enjoy it anyway. Yeah. So moving on is the other game by these two, by by <laughs> by this guy. Uh, this is Tolkien. Tolkien is I like a little bit better than Teotihuacan now that I think of it. And it looks more striking just because what you've got in Tolkien is this huge gear thing. And one of my one problems with Teotihuacan is that you have to remember to move the turn tracker. And, you know, you, you may think that's an easy thing to remember, but it isn't. And if you don't, then it makes the game much too long. In, te in uh, Tolkien, it has this gear, and that gear is the timer for the game. And you always remember to turn it because that's how you advance all of your workers. So... Even though it feels like a gimmick, it's a very functional one. My friend here painted mine for me, so it looks nice too, which is always good. And it's kind of the same game as Teotihuacan, except you're not building a pyramid, you're moving up tracks and, and gaining points. There's an expansion for it that adds special abilities and uh, negative events <laughs> and other things, but it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating piece of game design here. And it, it's, it's one that is memorable, even if, you know, just because of how it looks. I do remember one thing was some of, I think it was your friends in Estonia wanted to play this with like a, 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 a 10 second turn timer so that they could get it in half an hour and claim that it was a filler game, which I found rather enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, <laughs> at least the concept, I was not involved in that game. A good joke. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's a great game and it looks great. And it's an older one now at this point, because I think it was 2012, but it has really held up well and is one of the best games from that period. And I am always happy to play this. True. Yeah. So, I That's the one from that family of games that I'm finally willing to try. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, so, well, I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> yeah, it I definitely so. looks better than, than Teotihuacan. It looks more... <laughs> more colorful and less though it has a lot of icons but it kind of feels like less icons well, they i don't know they also added artwork so that that helped the teotihuacan is pretty much just just icons just gray <laughs> yeah brown brown gray whatever <laughs> that'd be okay so yeah that's that anyway all right Number 37 is one of those instances where I cheat just a bit because uh, I have two games that are essentially the same, but I'm going to go ahead and say one of them for the for the list officially. Uh, the game that is on my number 37 slot is Orleans. Um, okay. Altiplano fits in the spot, too, because they're essentially the same game. They're just they're different differently elements. themed. Okay. Well, they w w one one has a little bit more moving around, but... I think now that I've had some time for a while, I think I thought that Altiplano was was the superior game. But now that I start to think about it, I I start to feel that I like Orleans better. Yeah. It might be because I just got you know the the newest, which I guess is a standalone expansion, which is the stories version. I haven't played it yet, but it's or this one just I think has a little bit more possibility to it. It's got the the different expansions already with the different modules and, and ways to play. And really what you're doing is collecting these, these tokens, putting them in your bag, drawing those tokens out, and using them to take actions. And you can also acquire new tokens, which go into your bag, which give you more options, but also make your bag a little bit more bloated so that you don't get to see those tokens as often. And that's really what you're doing. You're going through, you're doing that, you're playing a certain number of rounds, dealing with events, moving around a, a track, collecting resources. It seems a little bit dry. Altiplano is the same thing, essentially, except that you're also moving your figure around to take the different actions. So there's a little bit of tactical movement that's going on, but more or less you're fulfilling goals and collecting resources there too. Uh, I like both. If you were to ask me tomorrow which one I prefer, I might say Altiplano, but today I pick Orleans. So there you are. Yeah. I... 
I play this one. I, I like the bag building mechanism. I, I, I like the mechanism overly, but this game looks so bad. I mean, like well, this, it is, looks this is a bit medieval. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah it, medieval, but I mean, like it doesn't it doesn't call you to 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 play it. You know, it it just tracks, and it's the same with like with the Teo Teo camp. Uh, or how Tom, Tom Basil loves to say, "City of Gods." So uh, <laughs> this this one has all these different tracks and colors, and you know everything is kind of a not blurry. I mean, like like a covered with sand, you know, kind of that dusty type artwork. I don't know. Hmm. Just well. it's hard for me to describe, but it's just if if you put it on the table, it doesn't call me. If it w yeah. if it would have been like TMG could have done much better job reprinting this one with the Lux artwork, much better artwork, maybe you know, not just those different pieces, uh, like uh, instead of the cubes and things, and who cares about that? I mean, like do something about the art. Art is the one that sells. Well, I and and I have recently acquired those. Um plastic bits that uh, board game geek is selling which are quite nice for this and for altiplano because regardless of which version you have whether it's little cardboard chits or the sticker tokens that came from tmg uh, this you know you're, you're handling those things a lot so the the, the plastic ones are a little, just a little bit nicer but yeah anyway that is my number 37 yeah which yeah. is sort of shared by those two games but today it's Orleans. Anyway, moving on to 36. 36 is a game that I love. It's a game that, uh, you know, is the only reason it's sort of left my top 10 and fallen a little bit is just because so many other games came out that I play more often. But this is a, just one of the funnest games that there is. It is Galaxy Trucker. And, you know, Galaxy Trucker, I've got a big fancy box for it now. It has a little bit too many, too much in the way of expansions, unfortunately. But what you're doing is you dump a bunch of tiles face down in the middle of the table. You set a timer and you grab tiles and you're trying to match the right ends and build the, the, the ship so that it will survive a space combat. And you might, you know, you have to build guns, you have to build engines, you have to build cargo bays so that you can get the things that give you points. And then after, and that's the really fun part. And then the game kind of stops and you go through this deck where you're going to see what happens to you on your interstellar adventure. And you can also look at the cards as part of the building phase. If you want to use some of your time, you can pick up the cards and look at them. And that gives you a little bit more chance to prepare for some of the randomness that is, <laughs> that is about to befall you. But it's at that point where you're going through space, you have to be able to take the game not so seriously because all kinds of bad things are going to happen. You'll lose parts of your ship, you might die. Uh, and then you go back to base, you get some points and you do it again and you play another round of the building and then another round of the destruction and then you do it a third time. But it really, it's, it's just, it, the building part is so fun and then the seeing what happens part is so silly and random that it just sort of makes me laugh every time I play this game. And there's not really a right way to do it. And that's what makes it so fun because you don't quite know what's going to happen. But it manages to take sort of trucking <laughs> and delivering stuff and make it something that's, that's a little bit more lively and a little bit more fun. So there yeah. you are. That is my number 36, Galaxy Trucker. I feel like I kind of played this one. But as much as I remember, maybe we started playing this one, but we couldn't finish it. Something came up. So, because I do remember starting to to learn this one or starting to build the ship already. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember the other part, so I'm not sure yeah. if I ever played this one like fully. But it's something I would I would try. I would try it, so I've never tried this one. It is, it is a game that is best to learn from someone who knows it. The, the rule book is, is fantastically written and very enjoyable, but it's it's a game that's best if you can see it in action a time or two and, and pick it up that way. Okay. So. All right. All right. Moving on. My number 35 is a game, again, there are so many versions of this game that kind of all occupy the same spot. 
but having to pick one, this is the pandemic family of games. And I, my favorite of the pandemic family is Rising Tide. So I will put it right here. That is the Netherlands one. This is uh, sort of the cooperative game that people kind of go to. Well, not this for a basic pandemic. Uh, is the cooperative game that people go to. You're trying to prevent the disease outbreak or in other versions, Cthulhu or <laughs> the, the invasion of various Germanic tribes or in this version, water. And your every turn, you've got some actions that you're going to take and then various bad stuff will happen. And so there's lots of this puzzle that's going on as you're trying to figure out, collect the right cards that you need and then to accomplish your goal, then you use those the most efficiently to accomplish your actions because you can always sacrifice one to go somewhere else. There's the legacy version. There's two versions of it that have a story, a story that you can play through a campaign if yeah. you want. And those are both fun. I've done the first one twice and the second one once. I, I was less of a fan of the second one just because of the ending. But um, but I, I like I, I, I still think the Rising Tide is the most enjoyable one for me it's the most different from the others but any of them the uh, the uh, the spain one the cthulhu one the roman one or the basic one with a couple of its expansions these pandemic family of games are fantastic so that's it 35 yeah I've never played any of the pandemic games uh, well i wouldn't start wow. with this one. The, the, the rising tide is the most complicated yeah. so but uh, i like it I've yeah, at some at, many times. <laughs> at, at some point, there were like those popular games, like the top games of BGG and things, and I was like, "Oh, it's top game. I don't really want to like." Plus, the theme and the cooperative nature they didn't really grasp me. So, um, but maybe, maybe. Well, there it is. Anyway, moving right on, we get back to that little design group we talked about a minute ago. With Teotihuacan and Sulkin, this is Council of Four. Okay. Council of Four, I mu there are two versions, and for sentimental reasons and for practical reasons, I definitely prefer the older version than the new one. Uh, in Council of Four, it's people remember it around here as the defenestration game, because you've got, in the original, and that's the new one you're looking at there, in the original one, you've got these little balconies, and you'll take a worker and push him in, and then it'll push somebody off the other side of the balcony, which is just kind of fun. Um, and the the composition of each of the areas with the different colors is going to tell you what cards you have to pay to perform that action. And so that's why you'll want to try and control who is in the balcony, so that you can you make your cards more used more efficiently. You can always use one to four cards, and if you use fewer cards that match then you have to pay more. Mm -hmm. And if you use more cards that match, you don't have to pay as much money, but you have to save up a little bit longer to get the action. So there's a lot of, you know, there's that decision that's going on. You're moving around and trying to get these bonuses. And when you get the, a bonus and then it's connected by a, a road to another bonus, you're going to get that bonus again. So you're setting yourself up for combos of bonuses throughout the game. Uh, the new version it has maybe, may, I guess it does have better artwork. It looks a little bit more engaging, but it got rid of that balcony thing. And instead you've just got people along a track and that made me sad. So, uh, and also the new version only has the board. I think it, I haven't played it yet, but I think it's a double-sided board. You've got those two layouts. Whereas the older version, you could customize it by, because each of the, it was made by, up by four boards and you could flip them over and have a slightly different layout on, on each side. So you've got a few more different possibilities there. Anyway, that is my number 34, Council of Four. Never played this one, no opinion. There you go. <laughs> my number 33 is a game that also has too many expansions. It is a popular game. The game is Terraforming Mars. Mm -hmm. This was my favorite game a few years ago. Uh, when it came out, I played it a lot. It's uh, a fascinating game where you're essentially taking cards and you're buying, you, you'll get four cards every round, you'll buy them, and then you're trying to accomplish different goals and you're putting stuff out on the board to colonize Mars. It could be water, it could be cities, it could be forests, it could be random or various other tiles. 
And when you do that, you're incentivized because the more you contribute to the Mars project, the more money and points you're getting each round. I mean, you, that's your score for the game, but you're also getting more money each round. It, there's just lots of possibilities. There's a few expansions that give you different boards that give you uh, sort of ways to jumpstart the game that give you different special abilities to go through. There's the new version, which I haven't, it just adds sort of a separate side game. And I, I'm not the, the, the new expansion. I'm not sure about that one yet. I haven't tried it though. My favorite expansion though is not an official expansion. It is one that you can find on the game crafter website. And that is the alternate goal tiles. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's basically because the different maps have different goals on them. And so you, can take these little tiles that are the unofficial expansion and put them out on and use a, a different random set of goals to work with each game, which I think is, is fantastic. Uh, anyway, there's a million cards in the game. You've got special abilities. You've got sort of making things work. There's always something to do. And the game doesn't look the best, in my opinion, but it's, it's held up really well and it continues to be supported so that's also always nice i really like terraforming mars yeah i, I did enjoy it as well uh, yeah that's that's the thing where uh, the game is extremely popular but it's it's kind of ugly it is ugly to be honest it's functional but ugly in my opinion everything is functional yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, like, yeah, that. But that's where I would have loved to see, like, a kind of a deluxe version or like something that gives more arts. But because it has a ton of expansions, I mean, like, what would be the package? Like, two hundred dollars for the deluxe version, so mm -hmm. like that. Uh, it's it, it's it's an enjoyable game, but it, it it's a game that needs investments, not only in money <laughs> for the expansions, but I mean, like, in time, in kind of a contributing your uh, like creating strategies and yeah. going through all the different cards so you know them so you know what's coming up this game is all about that and, yeah yeah now in terms of the expansions not all of them are really necessary in fact there's some that mm -hmm. i rarely I, I mean i i think when i play it i don't usually use the venus board i don't usually use the sort of colonies because they're just they just add a little bit of extra rules uh, the Prelude one is probably the best expansion, and the map that gives you alternate layouts. But anyway, I think it's it's a game that should be given to Jamie Stegmar so he, he can make an essential edition with the update uh, artwork or something like that. You know. And so then there's too many versions, and so you don't know how to buy it. That's... Yeah, yeah. But, but, but <laughs> I mean, like for this one, I mean, like yeah. Plus, I I saw this one, so I I saw this one like two one or two years before it was released. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a small sneak peek. Uh, so there were those different brothers uh, from Frick's Games, yeah. A s very small booth in essence. So I, we went to them because I had kind of a markdown that there's a game about terraforming Mars. So I was like, oh, that's a great idea of, of a game, of a theme. And at that point, everybody else was like, yeah, doesn't sound really interesting. It's nothing. So we mm -hmm. didn't film it. No. <laughs> so we would have, we would have had a very you know very big video because yeah. this game went viral after that right a year or two yeah. after that so yeah that's that's a sad news but well who cares oh well <laughs> anyway keep on moving moving on a game that i know you weren't a huge fan of but i it's one of my go-to two-player games one of my go-to travel games again it's much like some wonders duel this is the bloody inn Thematically, yeah. you know, based on a, an old French horror movie, uh, horror, dark comedy movie that I haven't even seen, but it's uh, you, but you're you've got this in and you're trying to kill people and bury them in the backyard. That's really what you're doing. It almost, you know, it reminds me of a book I read recently, which was called Mr. Slaughter, actually. But uh, anyway, you're it's a card game and. Every round, a bunch of cards will come out, and they're characters with different colors, and the colors each help you with a different ability. And so you've got two actions. You might take people into your hand, which lets you have more cards to pay for different actions in the future, and also makes certain kinds of actions more efficient. You might build a card from your hand as a building, which gives you an ongoing special ability. You might murder a card from the table, which flips it over, and that's a, uh, that's a potential for points in the future. 
but and then you have, can bury the card at which point you're actually going to get those points and if you keep the the, the, the murdered cards on, on the table too long and there's any policeman then you lose those cards which essentially means you lost an action <coughs> and not only do you not get the money you also have to pay some money so that's bad you want to make sure that you're careful about the time there small expansion Expansion adds some things that I like a lot and some things I don't. I mean, like the other green cards, I don't really care for very much. They weren't all that ex exciting, but it adds some different characters that have different abilities and some sort of special ability cards you can draft at the beginning of the game. Anyway, the game is short. The game is, is pretty fast and pretty fun and quirky in its own respect. And it's one that, you know, the people who like it, I, I have a couple of people that really like this game. And everybody else kind of gives it very short shrift because I just don't hear it talked about as much as maybe I think mm -hmm. it deserves to be. The artwork is definitely distinctive, <laughs> but it's uh, it's a game I've I've really enjoyed over the years, and it's one that I keep going back to. The bloody okay. Game. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, good. Yeah, uh, yeah. I well, I, I know you weren't a fan of it, so there you yeah. go. All <laughs> right, moving on. Number 31. 31 is a game I know you like. This is Santorini. Santorini is another abstract game where really all you're trying to do is build this building and climb to the top of it. And you're positioning your two workers in such a way that, as to be able to do that. The fun, of course, comes in that everybody has a, you know, different special abilities that can be used to make things a little bit different. And there are many, many choices for those special abilities so you can get something new every game. It's super easy to learn, super easy to teach, super easy to play. It's it's just a great abstract game, and it looks great too, which certainly doesn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. I, there you are. <laughs> I do really like this game. This is my this is probably my favorite two player game. I think. As of now. Well, it, it is not my favorite two player game. But it might be my favorite abstract. Uh, I game. know it's your favorite two-player game. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> We're gonna get to that. that. We're gonna we'll get, get to that, to that, that next time. Next um, time, yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving yeah. on. Sandrini's great. Uh, let's move on to number thirty. Number thirty is one of those Gen Con sellout games a couple of years ago that I was lucky enough to get. This is Champions of Midgard. Mm -hmm. Champions of Midgard is a worker placement game. That's what you're doing, placing workers and taking actions. And then what you're doing, going to get is these dice, and these dice are going to let you go and do the real point getters of the game, which is fighting the monsters. That's kind of all it is, is mm -hmm. collecting these. You've got a, a certain number of rounds. You're collecting these dice. You go down and fight some monsters. And you might win, you might lose. And that's where the expansions, of course, come in, which give you more spaces to go to. But more importantly, make it so that if you happen to lose, if your people have, if your your dice happen to die, intentionally said there, I know, ha ha ha. Let's keep going. Uh, then you get these tokens, and these tokens you can use in the future to buy different, better cards and get special, you know, get other bonuses. And so it kind of takes this takes the randomness of the game and turns it on its head where sometimes you actually want something to to die so that you can get a bonus you're working for uh the game looks great it's it's a game that is i remember i played it with my brother and, and his girlfriend and they were extremely competitive in this game i mean it was like really hardcore about this but i i, I i'm a little bit more casual about it but it's a fantastic little worker placement game one of the best that there mm -hmm. is and it looks good too, and the two expansions are at least one of them. The Valhalla expansion is almost essential for me at this point. The other one is, is good too, though. So there you go. Yeah, this is the one that uh, I would say kind of a the expansions elevate the game to a level yes, that I, mean. I really enjoyed this one. Without the expansions, I wouldn't enjoy it anymore. <laughs> it will be a little bit too boring because uh, I I love to have in more options as dice and I think this game, kind of um, this game hits the spot with having like a worker placement, kind of resource management, and having dice as a resource as a resource and as a merry thrashy, you know, dice checking thing going on there as well. So which is a nice combination there, a perfect hybrid. There you yeah. are. 
All right, moving on. Another game I like quite a lot. Uh, it's a game that I really went all in on. I've got the, the big fancy box and all the painted figures. The game is Blue, uh, Rising Sun. Rising Sun, that's the one. And B Blue Sun. No, it's just Rising Sun. That's the one. Okay. That's that's my number. Uh, my number twenty nine. Yes. This is uh, an interesting game you know, with this, you know, the Japanese monsters, and it's a difficult one to describe. Honestly, you've got your 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 clan, and it has a special ability, and that's sort of the core of your game. And then as you go through the game, you're going to get other special abilities, or gain points, or gain uh, mo control of these monster figures. Then there's a battle. Only certain locations are in the battle, so you'll only really fight if you're in one of those locations, and that's sort of determined at the beginning of the round. And the combat is sort of this is an interesting style of combat where you've got this board and you bid how much you want on these different uh, on these different actions, which can help you win or lose the combat depending on which you want to go for. It does not have the drafting that its sort of friend Blood Rage does. Instead, yeah. you're just buying cards from the table. And Which I actually think I like that better. Yes, I, I think, yes. I think I like that better yes. because it it's a little faster. And, you know, you sort of see what's there. Yes, um, open information, yeah. And But I, I just, I think the game really works for me. It's a game that I wish were more playable with two because, of course, that's my favorite number of people to play with. And so I don't get to play my nice version as much because I really have to play it here because at this point because it's in such a huge box. Uh, <laughs> but I really enjoy the game, and I like that it's not bloated with too many expansions. In fact, there really aren't any other than what came out of the Kickstarter. So, <laughs> and I mean, like, yeah, I, I don't think it will get any expansions. It's Which is good. I don't rate. think it needs any. I think it's, no, I think it's no, it ready to be where it is. I, I it, think it's ready to go. So <laughs> it gave you it gave you all the expansions, the Daimyo, and it gave you all the mm -hmm. possible expansions with the Kickstarter. So, but but you, I mean, like you, you can buy now. You can buy the base game, and you can probably buy quite a few expansions for it, like in yep. Blood Rage, except the yep. ex exclusive whatever monsters, miniatures, or whatever it was. Right. So, but yeah, I I have the whole package as well. I have this like everything for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I don't know if I have everything, everything like. I know if there were like metal coins or anything like that. I, oh, I, that. I even have those. Um, okay, I, I, I don't have. I, I, I went all in on this one, mm -hmm. <laughs> but because then... because uh, all the components uh, in the Kickstarter version, the deluxe version, is are the plastic components. So I yeah. felt like I don't need the metal coins with the plastic. Yeah. Kind of well, felt like that. Are... Yeah, you know, that's a preference thing. I mean, the metal coins are are nice. I like them better, but the plastic ones that come with the game are fine too. Oh, and the mat, the mat is, is essential for me, at least. Well, I, I the board like is the mat. small. I like the mat. The problem, of course, is that the mat's a little bit too big, and so it's difficult to store anywhere. But I True. do prefer it because yes. the board's a little bit bigger. But it is definitely a huge game mat. So it it it, it <laughs> gives you that kind of a huge appeal. It gives you that feel of a of a big game, mm -hmm. a huge clash going on. So yeah, Rising Sun. Mm -hmm. So that is my number 29. We are nice pick, moving. finally. <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, I'm glad you approved. The next one you'll also like. This is a game, of course, that you got because you lost a bet with me, and that is Stockpile. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did I? <laughs> yes. What, what, was what, the, what was it? This was the bet when I came over to Estonia, and you betted you, you, you were with Alina, and the bet was that if you could stay up longer than me, you got to choose the game, and if... I could stay up longer than you, then she got to choose the game. And I stayed up longer than you, uh, even though I had just come from the USA, and this was the one that she got. So you weren't it's really you. interested in it at that time. <laughs> yes, I wasn't but, at all, yeah. But you've since repented. And so <laughs> um, this is this is a great little stock game. I mean, it's you've, you've got some private information, and you know how a stock is going to behave. And there might be some public information, or there is some public information, but uh, you, is. you've got private information, and then you every turn you've got two cards, you're going to place one face up, face down, and then you bid on which of the piles of cards you want, and the bidding is a, you know this track bidding, and so you can pay this much, or you can go beyond somebody and pay that much more. So you know that, that part's going on, and then what you do is you get these stocks, you have a chance to sell them, which is really the only chance to act upon that inside information. 
and you then watch the other people to see who is uh, who's selling and who's not. And that's kind of it. I mean, that's sort of the crux of the game. Whoever has the most money wins, just like in life. But you, you really, that's what you're doing. There's some expansions that add the dice, which are nice, which change the makeup of, of, of what's going to, you know, what, what could increase or decrease in the round. Uh, you've got the stocks and bonds piece or the commodities and the bonds. And then you've got the new expansion, which hasn't arrived yet. So I can't comment on it, but really even just the base game, there's a lot there. It's, it's a simple, straightforward, easy to learn game. That is just a lot of fun to play when you get to it. So there you are. That is my number 28 stockpile. Yeah, we, we might talk about it later. Might. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, I, I know you like <laughs> the game too. So, anyway, yeah. moving on, moving on to number 27. That was a game I don't think you've played, but it is a, a classic that has been on my list since I've been doing a list. It is Le Havre, no. which is, uh, a, it's, it's not really a worker placement game. That's, that's, it kind of feels like it is, but it really isn't. You only got this one token and that's sort of the way you select your action. But the interesting thing about this game is you're just doing stuff to get you. I mean, everything in this game is built to give you points and you're trying to get them. And you can buy buildings with money. You can build buildings with actions. You can collect resources. You can get a huge pile of resources that accumulates. But if you don't have anything to do with those resources, that might be a waste. I mean, there could be 32 fish on that spot, but if you don't have any use for them, don't bother. You can then convert and upgrade the resources into better things, which just flips the tokens over. And then there's a bunch of buildings to buy and to use. And there's a lot of things to do in this game. And with two players, it is fantastic. With three players, it's pretty good. With four or five players, you really should be playing something else. But, <laughs> but I really enjoy Le Havre. It's just this interesting little singy puzzle for me. And there are some expansions, though, yeah, you know, even the basic one is, is, is just perfect as it is. It's held up really well, even though it's much older at this point. There you are. Okay. Yeah, I've never played this one. It's, you know, it's Uwe Rosenberg. So, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but Maybe. I think at this point, I'm looking at my list to make sure I, I, I'm not forgetting one. But I think it's the best of the Uwe Rosenberg games. So yeah maybe yeah maybe you mentioned the other one already yeah all right mm -hmm. let's move on number 26 is another game that i know you've played this is a game that everybody's played it's a game that i've played lots of times because everybody likes it and it looks good it's wingspan oh, okay wingspan happy salmon <laughs> no, no that one i don't think is on my list although i really do like it um <laughs> Wingspan is, I mean, everybody knows about it at this point. It looks great. What you're doing is you've got this board with with spots and you're building the, you're putting these birds down and the birds are going to use, usually going to give you some sort of special ability that you can activate. They make that action, you put it in, in that row a little bit better. They make the action better and they give you some sort of bonus action. That's it. You've got goals and those goals you're working toward each round are going to be a way to get points, and then you can have a bunch of other ways to get points by laying eggs on the birds or by tucking cards under or by storing food on the birds. But really, you're just trying to find the way that's going to get you the most points. But it's easy to learn, easy to get into. There's this new ver variant that is, or the, I don't know what it's called, the, the quick start, swift start version, which makes it a little easier to teach, although I'm rarely teaching it at this point because everybody around here has played it a lot. I just came out with an expansion. The expansion just adds more birds, essentially, and adds more goals. And the more goals are even more important than the more birds because there are already a lot of birds. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the new, the the new, um, the new end round goals are really nice because, you know, there were I think eight double sided tiles in the original, and now it adds I don't know, four or five more, which just gives you that much more in terms of possibilities. Really like wingspan. It's a game that was super hyped, but really lived up to it. And you know, it's just, it's a game that most everybody really enjoys at this point. Yeah. And I'm one of those people. That's one of those rare cases for me where uh, the more I play the game, the more I kind of enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Because I, I don't know, maybe it's just because I start getting familiar with the, uh, with the cards and 
yeah, or maybe maybe just enjoying it more, you know, or play with the right people, you know. And um, with this one, um, this one has has kind of a feel that it, like it has a touch of uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie's design, you know. It's like Jamie's development here, though. Uh, the designer was uh, who's the designer? Do you remember? Elizabeth, or yeah, mm -hmm. yes, uh, but it has a touch of Jamie's uh, development because you know it's 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 that's what I like in in quite a few other Stormer games, mm -hmm. where you take something to cover something up to make the action there better, and mm -hmm. thus making another thing better as well. You know, yep. you, you you're buying something, and then getting two of those different rows or columns better for mm -hmm. yourself like scythe is the prime example for, yeah. of that you know we're up upgrading through kind of a uh, putting stuff from here to there you know uh, so yeah it, wingspan is a is quite a good game yeah there you go all right moving back into the world of games i don't think you've played my number 25 25 is mombasa this mm -hmm. was a an Alexander Fister game from a couple of years. I don't think you you've not played this, have you? It's it's Fister. So what do well, you think? That does, you've played some Alexander Fister games. Uh, uh, you played Port Royal. <laughs> yeah, I played Port Royal and Isle of Sky, and there you go. Yeah. So that too. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> Mombasa is is not my favorite Alexander Fister game. That one's coming a little later. But this is uh, you've got this you've got you're essentially cool colonizing Africa and you it's it's a complicated game to describe you've got this track that you're moving up uh, with these books on it and uh, you know you can flip those anyway but the real mechanism of the game is that you'll select cards put them in these slots and then reveal them do the action and then they go up into the they go behind the board so you don't have them for a while until you have a chance to reclaim that's that the, those cards so it's it's an interesting take on the sort of hand and deck building that's that's going on uh in that you've got this this these cards and then you move them up and then you can, can't get them back until later and then on top of that you've got africa and you're moving up various tracks to gain points because you're going to get more points based upon how far you up are up on these these tracks which is multiplied by the the, the sort of amount that that particular company has gone out yeah. and uh, taken over Africa. They're not colonial powers. They're uh, companies that are exploiting Africa's resources, which is mm -hmm. much better. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, Maybe. It's, it's an interesting, it's, this is a great game. It, it really works. It, it fires, you know, it just, it makes my brain delight uh, when I, when I play it because there's so much that's going on. Um, I, I don't know how to describe it other than that. You've just got these tracks you're moving up and you're trying to, get the most points it's not the most thematic game which is probably a good thing but it it really i don't know it, it it sounds i just don't have anything to say about it other than that i really like it and it's a game i would always play so <laughs> there you go yeah 25 Mombasa. nothing to say let's go further yep keep going number 24 is a game i know you love and that is pulsar 2849 mm -hmm. and <laughs> this is sure. my favorite game from two years ago and I think over time, I like it a little bit better than my game from last year, which was Underwater Cities. Um, Pulsar 2849, the, you know, sorry, the thousand year anniversary of the gold rush. You're in space. It's, uh, that's kind of the theme. You're in space. And you're moving around yeah, the track with sure, your little, kind you're of moving theme. around space with, with the, uh, with your spaceship. And you're building up this pyramid of special abilities and you're trying sure. to colonize these these pulsar stars uh, and sure. get you know they give you points and and yeah. Yeah, that's kind of it it's basically just point harvesting the game but yeah. it's it's fascinating i love the way that it works no. i just love the puzzle of this you're really what you're doing is is drafting these dice and so you, you'll roll the dice and they'll go out and then how far you you which dice you take the lower ones move you usually forward on these tracks and the the, the, the higher ones, which are going to give you more choices, uh, more abilities, are going to move you back on these tracks. So you're you're managing your, your dice selection that way. But really, you're kind of doing point collecting. <laughs> that's that's how it is. But I love it. I, I just, I remember when this one came out, 
that one cruise, I must have played this 10 times. Well, 10 might be a, a bit much, but I played it all the time on that cruise. I was always, Victor fortunately liked it, so he was willing to play it with me. <laughs> but, but it's it's a, a great a great game for, if, if you want a game that you can just do stuff and get points and feel like you're being rewarded, that is Pulsar 2849. In this game, yeah, I felt like, maybe it's a bad analogy, but I felt like, it's kind of I went to Essen and all I got is just I went to the booth with waffles and then I got some waffles and then went away. Well, that like, sounds like while a great being trip. in Essen. I love waffles. Yeah, yeah, Essen Spiel. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great trip, <laughs> of course, the biggest convention of the year. And then, no, it's um, it was on my most uh, overrated games list, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, no, at number one or something. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I remember I, it was on there. Um, and I, I know this was not your favorite game, but it is definitely one of mine. Yeah, it, yeah, true. It's it might appeal to some people. Just yeah, it's extremely dry. That's that's where it, it is. The line um, I'm not going to pretend that there's anything there. Other than uh, the board you tried, like <laughs> you yep. tried a little bit. <laughs> Colonizing right. those stars. Oh my. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Okay. All right, moving on. Number 23, another game I don't think you've played, but this is definitely a game that has theme. This is a huge game, an expensive huge. game. It is called Too Many Bones. Too Many Bones, you have a character, and you are building up that character, and the character has a bunch of special abilities that are all dice, and you can buy these dice as you go along or upgrade your your stats so that you can roll more dice in combat or move faster. I'm really waving my hands a lot. It just must be early. Um, what, what, what you, but that, that's sort of the really fun part of the game. Once you've done that, you're going to go through an encounter and that's usually going to be some monsters that you're going to have to fight. And you're going to then use your special abilities to try and beat these monsters. And the goal ultimately of the game is to find the tyrant who is the, the big bad and beat this tyrant. And that's kind of what you're doing. There's a couple expansions, the f I mean, different characters you can get. There's also the underwater or the water expansion, which adds some sort of water elements, unsurprisingly, and then can make give you the ability to play sort of a campaign that, that you go through the different tyrants in order. New expansion coming on the way with a big box that adds even more stuff. But this is not a game that needs more stuff. This is a game that already has plenty of stuff. It barely fits in the box, but it's really great um i would not play it again this is a great solo or two-player game i think if you added more than that it might be a little bit uh, mm -hmm. much at that point but i i don't know i really like too many bones i remember i wanted to dislike this game and i went into the booth at gen con that year with my brother and we both said i said i want to look at this game so that i can convince myself i made the right decision not buying it and then i of course walked out <laughs> with the game and all of its expansions, because it was just that interesting mm -hmm. and just that captivating. And the company does not put out a lot of games and instead puts a lot of time into their games and a lot of, of, of development. And it's also completely waterproof, so you could play it in the bathtub or in a swimming pool if you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I do not. I do not think okay. that would be the best way to experience too many bones. But yeah. you could if you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, yeah, no, no opinion on that one. You might want um, to try this one. This is one. I mean, I don't think you need to buy it because it's also very expensive, but it's definitely one that's probably worth a play, just so you can see mm. if it's for you. Because it's one where if you sat down and played it, you know if it's for you. If you looked at it, you probably couldn't tell. Yeah, if, when I hear about that one, I've heard about that one quite much, so I kind of feel like it's not for me. But no, yeah, there's also that. Anyway, moving on, number 22. Number 22 is a game I talk about a lot. This is One Deck Dungeon. Mm -hmm. One Deck Dungeon is a game where you have a deck of cards that represents a dungeon. That's very surprising, of course, given the name of the game. So you take this deck of cards, and it can be the time that you have on each floor, and you've got these four cards, which are the doors. You'll flip them over and then you'll go through uh, an encounter. And that's it, you're building. Then when you finish the encounter, you're going to get to turn that card over and it will be either your 
It can be a, a, a different stat or it can be a special ability that you can activate. Lots of things it could be. And you're going to go through three floors of the dungeon, then you're going to fight a big monster and win or lose. Usually you'll lose by then. Or if you get to the end, maybe you'll win and you're happy. Um, there's an expansion. Yeah. I like the expansion too. Play both of them a lot. Uh, it's, it's just great. I, I really like One Deck Dungeon and it is a go-to solo game that can also be played with two. <laughs> yeah, nothing to say about that one. Yeah, well. this, this is one I, I think you've tried. All right. I, I have yeah. Moving on. Another game by uh, a group of people I rather like. It got an expansion recently that um, I have to wait until it comes out in English because I disagree with the grammar choices of the title in the German version. Um, the game is The Voyages of Marco Polo. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> without the discussion on German grammar, let's talk about this game. What we have is you've got some dice, and you're going to roll them and use them to take actions. This is a weird game in which you know you can always take an action, almost, almost always take an action, even if somebody's already taken it. You just have to pay some money based upon the value of your dice. The higher dice are going to give you access to better actions, but you're also going to have to pay more for them. You also, sort of the key of the game is that you've got a special ability that's kind of crazy and lets, kind of drives how you're going to play the game. And everybody else also has a crazy special ability. And you're just trying to do that. The, the theme is kind of loose here. But, <laughs> but you're moving around an eight map of the ancient world, trying to get to Beijing if you want to, trying to get to the places on your own gold cards if you want to, trying to gain resources and fill contracts if you want to. Lots of things to do. Not very long, but a well-designed game. The second version appears to be more of the same, almost the same game, just without Marco Polo being in it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, sort of turning a couple of things upside down, but kind of more of the same. Excited to find it when it comes out with a title whose grammar I can agree with. And I say yeah. that intentionally, which is also okay. questionable okay. grammar. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, The Voyages of Marco Polo or Marco Polo 2 uh, in service of the con. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I. Again, you haven't played this one either. No, I haven't played this one. It, you know, it's just like medieval style, like the art and everything is not for me, really. Mm -hmm. So. All right, moving on to number twenty. Number twenty is a game that I am always in the mood for. It is a very Euroy game. I played it just a couple weeks ago with the new Partners version, which I surprisingly liked. I usually hate Partner versions of games. But this one is Concordia. Okay. And it has its two expansions. Well, it has lots of map expansions. It also has Salsa and Venus as other expansions. But this is a game, uh, this is sort of that Rondel mechanism that people talk about, except there isn't one. What you have is a hand of cards. You're going to pick them up and play a card each turn, do its action. And one of the cards lets you pick up the cards and gives you some sort of bonus based on how long you waited to do so. You're moving around a map. You are building, you know, taking, colonizing these cities so that you can get more resources when certain actions are taken. You're buying new cards because each card has a, a marker on the bottom, which is a scoring opportunity. And so, for example, you might have the one that, that scores based upon how many different provinces you visited. And if you then buy lots of cards with that same, if you then visit lots of provinces and buy lots of cards with that same icon on it, then you're going to get a lot of points from that particular scoring aspect. The scoring is a little bit hard to explain the first time, but once once you've gone through it once, and there is a way to sort of do a mini scoring that gives you a very small bonus after after a round or two to help people learn it. But it's, it's I don't know, I really like this game. It's fascinating. It's very captivating. Uh, there's lots of people around here who always want to play it with me, so I get it played a lot. Uh, the maps are all different and add some sort of slight change to the rule, almost like Ticket to Ride does with you know, just a small tweak to the rules, but gives you uh, a, a fine new experience. Really like Concordia, and I even like the partner version. Yeah, never play this one. This is one you should play. I, I, I tell you that every time I talk about it, which is uh, uh, seems to be a lot. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, I know yeah. it does not look great. It, it is not it, the most beautiful game. No, it's not. But it, it there's there's the the ship one as well. But I like I like Concordia better. So 
Uh, I was uh, like though um, the ship was the trans uh, ship. No, transatlantic. Transatlantic, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the one that's similar to um, to Concordia. That's that's mm -hmm. the one that I was like, hmm, I should try this one. Uh, transatlantic. Yeah, I didn't have a chance. I didn't have a yeah. chance. But yeah. yeah, nobody has a copy. I think, or maybe somebody has. It. No, like it's it's a rare thing here. I have a copy. So. But yeah, yeah. Concordia is is the better game. It's just, I mean, Transatlantic tried a few things and got it, it's fun. I enjoy it, but every time I play it, I think I wish I'd played Concordia instead. So, <laughs> wish you were here, Concordia. All right, okay. moving on in the series of games you haven't played. Uh, we have another game that you do would find its way onto my list. This is a game I talk about a lot because I really like it. The game is Clans of Caledonia. Hmm. It's number... 19. 19. Number 19, Clans of Caledonia. This is a game where you have a map that's, I guess, Scotland? It's really just a map, hex grid, that you know, you've know you got four double-sided tiles, so it can be different. And what you're doing is going around and building stuff and you've got a special ability that is sure. always a really interesting special ability there's not a whole lot of theme here i'll admit that but yeah. you're trying to produce goods you can put out put out tokens that let you produce raw goods then you can upgrade that production and you can upgrade those to finished goods and then you're trying to fulfill contracts you're also it does have so this game has a problem, and that is a, a user a user uh, error problem, and that user is me, in that there's a bonus at the end of the game for the most, what I would call, connected, not connected settlements. And I always try to have as many as possible. And every time I play, I seem to focus just on that, because that's such an interesting concept for me. And, you know, you get like six points, you get an 18-point bonus for, for getting that, but then the person who gets the second most gets 12, so it's really worth six points. And I spend the whole game trying to work on that, and then I have, you know, 20 in that category, and everybody else has four. And so I, I could have used my time a little bit more efficiently. Um, but that's, you know, that's me. That's just sort of a fascinating thing for me, and I need to work on that. But I love playing the game. I love every round there's a different thing that's going to score and you can focus on that. There's goals that you can work on. There's a market system that's a fairly simple market system, but is interesting and can be very tight and frustrating depending on how other people do. There's a lot of things to upgrade. You can upgrade your ability to get money. You can upgrade your ability to produce different, uh, different goods. Not a long game, especially with two or three and just a lot of things to do and to try. And one that, that I'm always in the mood for. And it just satisfies me like very few other games. In fact, like only other 18, 18 other games. <laughs> that is my number 19, Clans of Caledonia. Also, yeah, no no opinion. Yeah, because you haven't played except, it. Except it's, um, it looks extremely boring and it's Clemens Franz artwork. So, so no, no. All right. No. <laughs> Moving on. My number 18 is another game I think you have not played. This is a very colorful game, but it's one I... And it's, well, the, the, the butt shouldn't be there. And it's one that I really enjoy. The game is Coimbra. Mm -hmm. Coimbra is an interesting game where you're going to... You start out by a sort of a drafting of dice, and then you're going to use those dice first for their number to get access to different cards or special abilities, and then you're going to use the dice for their color. So... You, you it's, and to sort of activate these these tracks and get different kinds of income. And there's a lot going on, but it's a very simple game when you get down to it. Really what you're trying to do is to, you can move around this board and get special abilities. You can um, get special abilities from these cards and end game scoring from these cards. You can just, there's a track that just gives you points. And if you max that one out, you're just gonna get a ton of points every round. Points. There's, uh, there's it's, it's a pointy game. Um, it's, you know, like a needle and it's got a point and, you know, the, the theme <laughs> is again, really barely there, but the game itself is just so fascinatingly fun. A lot of symbolism on the cards, which makes it a little bit difficult sometimes. And, and it's kind of hard to look it up in the rule book. It's not the best for that, but once you've figured it out, once you played it through once or play with somebody who has, you can kind of get to the point where you don't have to look at it anymore, but it's. I don't know. I just I find that selection of dice first for the number, then for the color, 
and the different options that opens up to you. Really interesting, and I really like this game. Yeah. And you haven't played it. Uh, no. Um, when I <laughs> saw the cover for the first time, I was like, ooh, that's a nice cover. And then I went deeper and realized, oh, that's, no, oh, ooh, that, no. So it's, uh, yeah, it, it's tracks, tracks, points, tracks, tracks, things. A I map that is, the map lo lo that looks the same as with a, like, 100,000 more Euro games of the same thing going on and on. Dice, tracks, and the map with those roads. Concordia looks the same, basically. I mean, like, the, the old, all those parts, they all, they're all always the same. I want something. Oh, don't mess with the classic. Different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Not you for me. I'm a rebel. You might like it. I'm a rebel. Anyway. <laughs> well, moving on to 17, this is a game you have played. In a game that does not have points and tracks. This is a one versus, well, for me, usually a one versus one game, but you could play one versus a couple. Four. The game is uh, Catacombs. Yeah, that's a game. I got. I keep getting new versions of this game. Uh, I just got the new one, which is in a big box that has the play mats instead of the, uh, instead of the boards. I probably mm, need nice. to stop getting new versions of the game, but I really enjoy it. I, I still even have my original Catacombs, the old ugly one. But really what you're doing is one person's the dungeon master and one person is a team of heroes, or you, know, you can split the heroes up. And you're going to take an action to usually to flick your, your thing to attack. If you hit something, that can cause it to take damage. And that's really what you're doing. It's a flicking game that's set in a dungeon, and... You're going through trying to make it to the end as the heroes to beat the dungeon lord or as the dungeon lord you're trying to it's sort of a fine balance you're trying to weaken the heroes so that you can kill them in the final room instead of crushing them in the first room uh, and causing them to have a bad experience <laughs> yeah. that's that's the dungeon lord's task um but there's a lot of different characters now lots of special abilities lots of expansions lots of stuff to try and do and sort of this concept of, of going through, of, it's a, it's a non-serious dungeon crawl that is just fascinatingly fun. I, I, I really enjoy it. Unfortunately, there's so much there that it takes a while for me to remember how to play each time I, I get it out because I don't get to play yes. it as often as I'd like to. But I really love Catacombs. So. Yeah, yeah, true. A great flicking game with uh, theme and mechanics around it, with, like buying cards. Extremely difficult. And no it's, almost, it's almost impossible to 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 win as a hero, in my opinion, uh, because the overlords are overpowered. It, it sh there should be some balancing done, uh, well, in my opinion. There is balancing, and that's the person's skill. True. <laughs> you hit, if you win. are a better <laughs> flicker, then you can do a heroes. Uh, but mm -hmm. I mean, like this is a two-player game. This is like yeah. if you play with more players, you divide the heroes. Like the the overlord has a, a plethora of options, you know, and all those minions they flick, they have a lot of fun. And then if you play with like three players or four players and all like that, like all the other players are just you know controlling just one hero and they do one flick, done, boom. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I definitely it's think not. I it's not. I fun prefer to... this as two. Yes. Okay. All Good right. Pick. Finally. So, moving on from things you'll approve of to something that I don't think you've played, and you'll probably comment on the fact that it is an ugly game. And I am going to say that now because I agree it is not a very good-looking game, but it is a fascinatingly fun one. That is Food Chain Magnet. Um, okay. Food Chain Magnet is a game, uh, very much an economic game, where you're trying to manipulate and crush your opponent. You very steep learning curve on this game. But what you're doing is building up a fast food restaurant, deciding what it's going to make, then advertising those products to other people so that they will buy them. And then if you have the ability to, you can sort of advertise to people in a way that they're going to come to your store rather than your opponents. And you're, you'll peel off the competition from there. There are some thematic issues going on here, uh, but it's a fine game and it's a really interesting one if you play with people who are not learning. If, you, uh -huh. if you're playing with a learning person, you really have to hold back or that person might have a bad experience. But, uh, yeah, because this is one that I rewards that. having played it a time or two. And if, if you're going to learn it, you kind of got to go into it knowing that you'll probably be crushed. 
The game takes up a whole lot of space and a lot of time. And because of that, again, I prefer it in the two or three. I think three is probably the best player count for this. And game. it's not the prototype I'm, I'm, I'm showing you here. No, that's the way it looks. It, it's not yes. the prettiest game. It did just come out with an expansion, which is called the Ketchup Mechanism. And yeah, I think that's just very funny because it's a pun. But I, and I haven't, I haven't, I've ordered it, but it hasn't arrived yet. So I, I really like Food Chain Magnet. I don't <laughs> like the paper money. And so I have, you mm. know, I have, I play with sort of coins or chips at that point. But I, I really think the game itself is a really interesting experience, and it's definitely the best game from this company, in my opinion. So there you are. I don't think you've played it, and it seems like the kind you might not like to play. So I'm just going to leave that there. No, <laughs> no. This this is this is one of the worst ever. Like in production uh, in my opinion what I when I what I saw about this game it's one of the uh, worst I productions ever ever it's one of the worst productions ever never do such games it's, it looks, uh, it's amazing like food chain magnet <laughs> sure no anyway yeah. moving on number 15 is another game that you have played and that I think you do like and this game is Russian railroads yeah, Russian yeah. Railroads is a highly thematic uh, train game where you're oh. actually, it's sorry, uh, it's a, a game about collecting points. That's the theme. And it True. implements that theme very well. Um, yes. It's a train game with no trains in it. Um, really, what you're doing is picking something you want to focus on and then trying to get as many points out of that thing as possible. You could build these these tracks to the end to try and get different bonuses. You, you know, there's with the German Rails expansion, you've got different special abilities you can get, ongoing resources. It's at its core worker placement. That's what you're doing, and then you know you can upgrade your technologies to be able to access different types of train tracks and move those train tracks along this. I mean, the theme's not there, but it's a great game. It's, uh, I mean, this is one where another like Food Chain Magnet, one where if you've played it a time or two, you're going to do a lot better than the first time person. But knowing that and going into it, expecting to be crushed your first time, your second time is going to be amazing. So I I really like Russian Railroads. I have, it's two expansions. I have played both of them. German is the best of the two, but that's, that's just my opinion. Uh, and I like, it's one that I don't get to play as much anymore just because it's a little older and doesn't, I mean, seeing it looking, seeing it on the table, it doesn't scream, come play me now. But but if I do get a chance to play it, I'm always really happy I did. Yeah, it's it's a really good game. Uh, yes, it looks like a point slot game similar to others, it but it looks stylish, <laughs> though. It looks quite stylish uh, if, you, if you compare it to, like, Concordia or, or Marco Polo game. It looks a little bit more stylish. All those tracks and things going on here, like, the boards and st such. I don't know, just for me. Well, I, 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 I don't know that I agree with that, but I will. we do agree that the theme is, is not particularly strong either way. So. Uh, no, no, it's uh, <laughs> the strongest but theme. It's, it's, though it's it has game. more theme than quite a few other games, like Orleans or something, or Orleans. So it well, has more theme. Posit it has about the same it, it has It theme. has some theme, and it has more <laughs> theme than... Pulsar, it has like 100% more theme than Pulsar. I think it has about the same amount of theme as that. No, no. But I... I do enjoy it more than Pulsar, which is, although I really enjoy Pulsar. Thank you. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're in the last four for today. Yeah. Last four. And each of these is a much more thematic game than any of the ones I've talked about so far. <laughs> I think you've played at least a couple of these. Uh, the first one, number 14, is Root. Root is this little game. Root. Oh, you haven't? Oh, okay. No. Well, Root is a fine game that you should play. Yes. Uh, Root is a, an impossible game to teach. I, I, I really don't yes. like teaching it, but <laughs> I, I do like playing it with people who already know what they're doing. You've got yes. uh, different woodland factions. There are six uh, currently, although the new expansion is coming out in February, I think. So uh, those six factions, uh, they each have some sort of different way that they play. And you're trying to, you can win the game by 
completing these goals, or you can win the game by getting to the end of the point track, or you can even sort of ally with somebody else and win the game if that person wins. So there's different ways to do that. Uh, you've got that they all fight differently. They all behave differently. They're various woodland creatures. They're cute looking. And yet it's kind of a vicious game. And it's, it's a hard one to describe. It's a hard one to teach. But really, it's uh, a complicated war game set in the forest. So <laughs> I once went through and trying to teach somebody, compared the factions to various World War II, World War I powers, which actually made it a little easier to understand. But um, I, I don't really know what more to say other than that I really love playing Root. I love, I don't love it solo, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It has a solo version, but it's a really lackluster solo version. Um, so, but I like playing with people. I like playing with two or three the best. If you get everybody in there, it takes a little while. Mm -hmm. I have played all of the factions at least once, although the Beaver faction I have only played once just because they have to be played with a larger, larger player count or else they're not really, they don't really work. So anyway, it's a game that was very popular last year. It is still very popular with me. And I think it is adorable and really, really quite good. That is Root. Okay. Yeah, I've I've played this one. Something okay. I should try at some point, but it's yeah, it's really hard to to learn. Um, so. Yeah, it is. Anyway, all right. Moving on. Number thirteen. A new game. New game in this year. A new game that when it arrived, it exploded upon my world, and I played it again and again and again and again. Okay. The game is the other game from the uh, Too Many Bones people. Ship Theory Games. That is. Cloudspire. Uh, Cloud Spire. It's the other one that I really like. Cloud Spire is a fantastic game. You've got this board and you've got your faction and you're trying to build it up and then you sort of go into the main part of the game, which is almost automated. You know, your figures are going to move along a path based upon their statistics and then they're going to attack something they're near. And then there's these towers you can build and the towers are going to shoot down opponents' enemies. And that's a choice you get to make is which which enemy you're going to attack. And you've got these heroes and they're moving around and they, they've got a little bit more flexibility. There are various things you can uncover to try and um, you know, get, get points or, or, or mm -hmm, be able to mm -hmm. get closer to your opponent's territory. What you're trying to do, there's not really points in the game. I, I misspoke. You can gain different, different characters and different abilities by, or, or money by conquering these little quest tiles. Uh, the end of the game is, you know, it, this is best as a one versus one game in my opinion. You could play with more, though. Uh, but you're going to go and you're trying to destroy your opponent's fortress. And if you destroy your opponent's fortress, you win. Otherwise, you go and see which fortress has been upgraded the most, and that person wins. That's, that's really what it is. It's At its core, the game is pretty simple, although there are a lot of rules going on. The production is a little bit overdone, but that's sort of what this company does. And I just remember when I played it the first time, all I wanted to do was play this game. And for a couple of weeks... Everybody that I had a chance to play it with got to play this game. There's also a cooperative version and a solo version. Haven't played cooperative, have tried solo. The solo works great. It's a great way to learn. Um, <laughs> and each of the factions is completely different. There are five. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like Cloudspire. It's a game that I have to play here, though, just because it's so huge that I just can't take it with me anywhere. It's also very expensive. So there's that. Number 13... Brand new game, Cloudspire. Yeah, uh, nothing to say about this game. Yeah, no, it looks cool. There is yeah. there is one other new game that will be in in the remaining top twelve, but um, we'll get to that later. Number twelve is another game I don't think you've played. This <laughs> is a game that used to be in my I think it was my number four for a while. It's mm -hmm. gone down a little bit just because I don't play it as often. But this is um, the the game is called Chaos in the Old World. Mm-hmm. You've got various evil gods, and the evil gods are trying to destroy humanity in their own way. And each one, you can, each one has its own special victory. It's almost like Root, in that each faction has its own special victory condition. Uh, that you know, thing that it's focusing on to try and move its way to victory, or you can just win by points. And there are five different factions again. And they're all very different, and they're trying to do different things and manipul ma manipulate the board in different ways. The game almost feels like Cthulhu Wars. I mean, Cthulhu Wars mm -hmm. feels almost like a reprint of this one, 
although it's kind of gone beyond and made it a little bit bigger. But I think the simplicity of this one's a little bit better. It was sort of the first time that rage mechanism that we see in Blood Rage uh, comes out here. You, you've sort of got that magic and you use it and it sort of keeps you in the game if you, depending on how fast you spend it. It's got the exploding dice. It's got a lot of random sort of fighting that goes on, but it's 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 just really a great game. It does not it's not a theme that attracts everybody, and that's why I don't get to play it as much as I used to. But I really love, always have loved Chaos in the Old World, and I still do. It is my number twelve. Okay. Uh, yeah, I I know it's an older design from Eric Lang, and then he. Yep. When indeed it's Blood Rage, which is because has maybe a little bit of similarities to that, so yeah. Yeah, this one doesn't have the drafting. You've sort of got your own deck in it, mm -hmm. uh, but but it it sort of feels like the 1.0 version of Blood Rage. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I think I like it. But I definitely like it better than that game. So anyway, that's yeah. That. All, All right. right, moving on to my number eleven, the last one we're going to talk about in this very long video, but we're still <laughs> going to keep it under two hours. Uh, <laughs> we tried. This is a game, another game I don't think you've played, but it's a game I talk about all the time. It is a cooperative game. It is looking at my list, my favorite Grito cooperative Islando? game. No, my second, my second favorite cooperative game. Yes, it is. It is Spirit Island. Yes. Spirit Island is a game where you take some sort of woodland spirit, some nature spirit, and you are trying to wipe off those evil settlers who are coming onto your island. It is a gorgeous looking game. It is a, it, it, it's, it's a complicated one to learn. You still haven't played it, right? No, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's uh, the rule book. I don't know. It just, the, I, I need someone, I, I need somebody to, to teach it. Yeah, you do. This is a game that is best taught. The rule book is kind of backwards. Like first it tell it, it has two sections and you kind of have to flip back and forth and it's huge, yes. like large print Bad. rule book. So it's difficult to, it's not a bad rule book, but it's not how I would have designed it. Anyway, yeah, that's, what you're that's doing, mm -hmm. well, you've, you've got your cards and you're using your cards to, to activate abilities. And then each round you get to grow and upgrade yourself a little bit. And there's some tracks you're trying to move these discs off of that is going to let you have more control on the board, but also let you have access to play more cards or have more power that you're going to gain as a resource each round. So that's kind of what you're doing. Each of the spirits is very different. Uh, there are a bunch of them, too. There's a new expansion coming out probably next year, which adds even more. I, I really like Spirit Island. I, I, it's, it's one of those games that every now and then I just think, you know, I need to get that out and play it again, and I do. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Again, the more you play it with, the more complicated. It's, it's a weird, weird game in that if you play it with four people, you've got a whole lot more going on, but you can also help each other. Because you know, I can I can sort of spread my influence out onto the other boards, that lets me have greater access to destroy people. But you know, I I still think I like it best with one or two, just because you've got it feels like it's a little bit more controlled at that point. But there's a ton going on here, and as as a, as a complicated cooperative game, that's what this is, and I, it's it's sort of grown in appreciation as time has gone by. I think when mm -hmm. it came out about it, that people then discover and realize sort of all the potential that's there. So I realize that there are still a couple more cooperative games coming in my in my future. So I misspoke, but that's all right because I mm -hmm. can't read. Anyway, that's my last one for this video. It is my number eleven, Spirit Island, and it's a game that you should probably try sometime because I think you might like it. I should. Yes, that's the one I agree with. Yeah, it it looks nice. It definitely has theme. And doesn't have it has, has a track, theme, it. <laughs> doesn't have too many tracks. It looks nice, not like some <coughs> Pulsar <coughs> 28. Oh, nine, oh Pulsar is the one you're going to call out for being ugly when we talked about Teotihuacan. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> now I remember. And chain magnet. Oh, oh, don't make Come me. On. You pick don't make Pulsar me remember. when you have those two. <laughs> oh yes! Oh, don't make me remember. No, no. The the thing the, the problem is I I played Pulsar, and I I'm, I'm played the other one too. So I see. It's not too All bad. Right. Okay. All right. So well, that's, that's it for for for, uh, for most of my thing. All we have now is my current top ten, which is of course my top ten as of October when I made the list. I, I it might it might have changed based on a game I played and played and played and played and played last year, but 
that one I'll have to mention on a future video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so this is... <laughs> This is it for this video, and uh, next time we're going to do uh, my top 10, your top 10. We're going to do a combined video, so 20 mm -hmm. games in total. So, yeah, we're going to talk about our favorite, favorite picks and see if we agree with each other or it's another bunch of dry heroes or something. No, I'm... <laughs> okay. Well, when I look at my list, I find two games that are definitely Euro games, but I don't think either of them... Well, one of them you would consider dry. The other one I don't think you would. So... I, I don't even have a... the list right now, still. Oh, you don't have your I, list? I ha you don't... Yeah, I haven't made it yet. So I, oh. I'm still, well, I still... I still want to play... about yours. No, I, I need to play a few, few games again or something like that. I mean, I need to evaluate a few games before I well. do the list eventually. So... That's it for now. Thank you for watching. Right. We see you another time. Yes, indeed. Uh, when it's time to do something else. Yeah. I don't All know. All right. Well, we'll have to finish <laughs> up this video soon or, or you know this this topic. I 10, have to run. And then I have to run. Yeah. I actually do too, so I will talk to you later. Bye bye. Bye. Dun, 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 dun.